It's Linda McBee's workshop. Here's Linda. When you hear that music, you know that I'm busy playing the piano, but really what I love to do is create and make things with my sewing machine and find people who do exciting stuff, and that's what the show is all about today because I've got a really good, great lineup for you. But to begin with, I've got my friend Joan, and Joan has been with us many times. We go back to... School. Before we were born. Yeah, <laughs> we go back a long way. We were we raised in the same town, so this is kind of neat. And you are obsessed sewer, I mean, as well as... I'm um, obs obsessed, definitely. Yes, definitely. yes, yes, but I love your outfit. So I've got to show everybody, you got to see what Joan's got on, because this is what sewing is all about, and this is what makes it work. You start with the shoes, and your orange and pink, and then you had to create the whole thing orange and pink. I mean, it's just gorgeous. Even my backyard matches. Well, I noticed the toenails match, too, and that's important. So, yes, it makes me kind of jealous just to have pain. But, okay, I can have black and white ones, too. But, anyway, the exciting thing in both of our lives is that we're going to have grandchildren. Yes. Nothing better than some crazy women who are expecting babies. And who sew. And who sew. So, I thought, and both of these babies are going to be coming in the cooler weather, so I thought we better talk about bunting bags. Exactly. So, really, this was one that I did for my first grandchild, and I mean, I have never seen anything as cute, of course, as this baby in this with her matching boots, the whole business, so hopefully baby number two can, can wear this one as well. But we thought, what was even better than this would be maybe the bunting bag, and this fabric is this reversible Sherpa, Sherpa. stuff. Oh, okay. So, it's got the sheepskin-like stuff on the inside, and the suede on the outside, so I mean, Talk about cuddly and nice oh, to and crawl warm. into that. So you could also make bunting bags without letting their arms out and without letting their feet out. This is sort of a decision. We do have to put the legs in them because of the car seats. True. Yeah. So you've got the choice of probably how much time you've got. That's right. And We're how many of these you've got to make if you've got triplets coming or something. Oh, you heavens. <laughs> it's not our problem, though. We're the grandparents, That's right. Remember? We say go home. Yes, exactly. So that's really our first choice, I think, on the bunting bags, is decide what fabric. So okay. that would Sherpa. be good. Sherpa. Uh, fleece. I mean, fleece is, is out there. Make sure oh. it's a good quality fleece, because there are some bad fleeces. Right. And this is a beautiful non-peel fleece, and fairly heavy. And people always say, what's the right side? But I know that that little trick, if you pull it, rolls Yes, it to rolls the wrong to the side. wrong side. If you pull it from, so you can see, if you pull it across the grain, it rolls to the okay. wrong side. So that is one way, and you'll notice... If you get your glasses on, that this is a lot nicer Finish. than this side. Yeah. That looks kind of pilly already. If it started to look peeled on the bolt, you don't want to be buying it. No, yeah. if that's the right side. Yes, that's exactly. right. Okay. But this is also one of the new fabrics. Oh, it's, it's so soft. Just, yeah. It's called Minky, and actually um, there's various forms of this. But now this is the next generation of that, which is called Chinchilla. Oh. And it's just so oh. soft and Chinchilla-ish. And then there's a new one now coming that's doubled. So it's oh. going to be... Both sides. Oh, wow. Okay. So, I mean, that. You could make a reversible. Well, <laughs> would it matter? No, no, we don't need, no, we don't need to go there for the babies. But we also did a quilt, and we thought, and this we did a couple of um, programs ago with the quilt, and that would be a nice baby so thing, soft. too. So soft. Yeah. So there is the bunting bag made out of fleece and different colors. So that's a simple way of doing it. And that's the one with the arms and the feet. So the arms can be either... Well, the baby can get their hand, hand out, but out. I'm not sure that's good or bad. So right. you know, the hand comes out there. So if you want that, or you can just lock them up, sort of straight jacket-ish, whatever. <laughs> Depends on the day, I presume. Yeah, I suppose. This is the newborn one, though, because I find when babies are really little, they don't really want to have their arms anywhere. No. And that's kind of a nice style for the, for the newborn. And just, again, color-blocked. But let's go to this one, and sort of, because we kind of played around with this a little bit, just to see what we could do to decorate, because... That's the joy of sewing, is right. to make things different, make things unusual. I mean, that's why we do this. If we don't want, want to be seen on the street. Well, if you want to find one like you see everybody else, then you go buy one. Exactly. But these babies are special. They're individuals, they so are. they need special ones. So, okay, we had one here with this. And this piece of wallpaper, I had used that for my babies in oh. their room because I thought that was such a pretty 
And I thought, you know, and my babies are now having babies, mm -hmm. so I thought this would be a good thing. If we put that yellow zipper in there, and we put these, do you want to put some sure, on? Sure, the triangles. Triangles along there, and we could put little dots in there, so you could put another triangle here, or they could... So, you know, they could go something like So that would be kind of a fun decoration, if you want. I mean, these bunting bags, you could do that and do that along the other side. Right. And that would be kind of fun. So that's a possibility. Um, we were always sort of saying, you know, do you make it boyish? How do you make it boyish? boyish. Not that boys have to have ugly things, but they can't be quite no. as cute. But I thought, this is kind of a dragon-looking thing, or dinosaur-looking thing. True. If you did that, if you put that along. I think it's a stegosaurus. Yes, it could be. And this could be up along around the hood. Okay. You could probably have a red zipper for that one if you wanted, instead of the yellow zipper. Or so blue and red. Blue and, yes, combination. That would I work. think I have a few of those at home. <laughs> That's Half true. Half of one of each. That's true. So that would work. We did one with flowers. And I thought the flowers were quite fun. So let's just leave that yellow zipper. And then say, if you wanted to kind of create a yoke, you could put a yoke. This could be kind of a curved yoke. We could put this fleece. Just on the front. Just on the front, or it could be on the back. And you could put some flowers. Just cut out some flowers and some leaves and put some centers in the flowers. And this rickrack could go along there, and that would be quite pretty. And this So we'd have to cut it where yes, the zipper is? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. I think we'll put the zipper in first, and then we'll decorate. Okay. Because that way, if anything needs to line up, you don't it's have right to worry about it. Yeah. Right. And sewing on those things, you could do a zigzag, and there's a, just a wide zigzag, or you could just go down and have them sort of dimensional. And did you do you the red thread? Yes, yeah. yeah. Just to add. Yeah, and that just, that's kind of a quick and easy way. So, there's lots of ways to decorate. So, hopefully there's lots of grandchildren, and we can just keep doing this. We'll so. just keep, that's right. Yeah. So, what we're going to do then, we'll put the zipper in first. Okay. So, here is your front. And we'll take that zipper, and you've done this many times. Yes. Take the zipper apart. I showed you how to do this, didn't I? Right side to right side, raw edge to raw edge. You got if that. If I never remember anything else. You'll remember that. I'll so remember there that. is right side of the zipper to the right side, raw edge to raw edge. Pin this well, and this is the place where people often stretch it. I often like to leave this flat on the table yes. and just pin it across and leave those pins in as you sew it and... and you know, keep it really flat. Because if you take it up in your hand and you go like this, you're molding you're it. You're going to be molding it, you're going to be stretching it. So you put one side on, flip that over, and top stitch that. Put the other side on, do the same thing. This is going to be too long, so it doesn't really matter that's going to end up at the no, bottom. So that's Babies fine. have padding. Yeah, yeah. So then we'll decorate it, and you can decorate it in any of those ways that we talked about. Okay. So we've got one down here that we've done all that. So if you look at this, this was kind of a neat way to decorate. It was just using braid and putting a little rickrack peeking out of the sides. Side. So here's the zipper in, and it's top-stitched in. Right. This is that piece that I'm saying is hanging out, but we're saying we've got padding, so that's not a problem. We're going to put right sides together. Oh, I didn't. I missed that step. So once we've got the front done, we're going to put right sides together and sew around um, here and around there. So this so would just sew like around this. the circumference. And it would sew. Yeah. So well, you can do it with no hands. Okay. So you can sew all the way around there and all the way around there and all the way around there and all the way around there. You know. And it, very quick. Very quick. But if you want to put the hands and the feet, this is just a separate little piece that that sews. This would go onto here, right sides together. And when you sew that, you would sew around. And you've hemmed both of these. Yes, yeah. Okay. yeah. And that just leaves a little hole. And you just cut it off the pattern, like you don't have to make a separate pattern piece. No, no, actually there is a pattern. It's on the oh, pattern. It? Okay. Yeah, it is, it is. So we've got that together, the feet business, if you want the feet. And if they're big enough, actually, people often say, can they walk in these? And I say, once they're walking, they don't want any... No. Uh, you're going to have to chop this off and make I guess a coat. it could become your bedtime sleeper for camping. Yes, sure it could, sure it could. But, um... Yeah, so whether they have shoes on or not is not really a thing to be walking no. around in once they're at that it's stage. very slippery, too. Yes, although we could put the non-slip stuff. Yes. We could do that. Anyway, the, the foot is sort of a two-part foot. This is the first part of it. This would go on there. You would just stretch... Not sort of stretch it, just ease that on. Right. And that would go on. So that becomes the upper part of the foot. Okay. And then there's a circle. And it would and that, go. Let's see, this seam is already sewn together. And so that would plop onto there, Wrong. right sides right together, side together. And then stitch around that. And that would give you that round sort of okay, your teddy base. bear like paddy foot right. thing. So, okay, then really all we need is the hood. And the hood can be simply done by just binding it. So if you put on whatever color you decide that this needs Stitcher. to be, stitch that, flip that up, go around like that, and stitch in the ditch. And this is a lycra? 
Yes, this is stretchy. That's stretchy. Okay. In fact, I guess we didn't stitch in the ditch on this one. We actually stitched on top. Well, you can do it either way. It doesn't right. really matter. You decide which you're better at. Right. And yeah. sometimes yeah. it's better. Sure. And okay. then, oh, actually, the drawstring threader. Yeah, but we can't put drawstrings in this. But we can put the elastic. Put the so. elastic in this way. And really, the elastic is a good, smart way to just put the elastic in, stitch it, and bring it around and stitch it. Perfect. Uh, and then this threader, if you don't, you know about these I threaders. Know. I mean, this just saves so much time. It's just easy, easy way. So then you would sew the hood, center back to center back, sew this to front, flip that around, and then Top that's the hood. It. So I think that's just about it. Have we said everything there is to say about bunting bags? I think we have. I think it's an ideal. It's, we've really done it quickly, but it really isn't rocket science. No. It's just, I mean, you can do it the very simple way, just color blocking it. You can decorate it to your heart's content. You can... Um, they're going to be warm and cuddly. Yeah, yeah, they are going to be. And they're going to be beautiful. Of course. <laughs> but that's... One Our grandmother to the other. So, thank you, Joan, for having uh, for coming today and for playing well, with me. And um, thank you for having me. I enjoyed it. Uh, as usual. And our babies will play together too. So, thank you so much. Don't go away because we got more stuff coming up. I love it when you email me and when you communicate with me and I get so many interesting emails so I'm always looking to see what you're asking and what you're talking about and what you're thinking so go to our website it's www.makefeeworkshop.com and then you can find out all the things that are going on but one of the things that we just instigated this year and I I just feel very strongly about this is that we're coming up with something called the good works award and what it is, I find as I travel around the country and I, I go to so many different places, that there are so many people out there that are doing so many wonderful things, charity kind of things that are above and beyond the call and they're all using the sewing machine. So this Good, award, good Work Award is going to be an award that we do once a year in September. And I want you to nominate people or groups that are out there doing this stuff and they're not getting recognition and they're not getting paid to do it. The only rules in our, in our award system or the recognition system is that it has to be a true story and it has to involve the sewing machine. So I think there's lots of things that you could think of that would qualify this for this. And the one thing that I can think of right off the top is a group called Quilts for Kids. And I have one of the members of that group here, Laurie Heising. So welcome, Laurie. Hi, thank you. What do you think of my award idea? I think it's fabulous. There's, I, yes, it's 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 a it's a wonderful tribute to to um, things that are being done um, all over for for good great. causes. So tell me about what your group, Quilts for Kids, does. Well, Quilts for Kids was founded in uh, 2000. Um, by uh, Linda Arye, who is uh, an interior designer from Yardley, Pennsylvania. Lindas are good people, obviously. <laughs> yes, of course. Yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> and uh, she was um, in a, a design shop buying fabric for a client and noticed uh, about 20 uh, full garbage bags off to the side and queried as to what they were and found out that it was fabric um, oh. destined for the recycle oh. or oh. for the landfill. For the la oh, sad. And um, so she was uh, quite taken aback by that and said, you know, like, hold these bags and give me some time I, there's got to be a better use for that mm -hmm. and um, um, not long after that she thought of um, the, an instance where her daughter was in hospital and wasn't allowed to take her teddy bear with her because of um, sanitary things ex or something. exactly yes, yeah, exactly yeah. so she thought that if the fabrics could be put into quilts they could then be given to children in hospital settings and give them that little bit of comfort factor and um, and it's just taken off from there okay so this is now worldwide or certainly North America wide. North America there's 46 sister chapters, um, three of which are in Canada, and we can only hope that that number will oh, increase. Oh, yes, <laughs> yes, yes. So it's groups of women. How many people would there be in your group? Uh, we have uh, approximately 40 members. Really? And there are, uh, we meet once a month, and there are about 10 that are consistently at the meetings. Sure, but sure. It, th that doesn't it matter. Is, yeah. 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 So then you get fabric, and do you do this at the meetings? Do you make these quilts at the meetings? No, uh, the, the meetings are actually more of a business nature. We discuss the, our future plans and all of that. And we, our fun time is at the end of the meeting where yes, it's the show and tell. A bunch and of women that felt <laughs> having a business meeting right. Yeah, they, well, there's a, a little time. bit of business in sure there, there is. but yeah. yeah. So, sure there is. and then at the end, we, we show off uh, what we've made for our chosen group of, of the month. And 
So you, you have a project for a particular group, and these groups would be? There are uh, uh, women's shelters, children's hospitals, uh, crisis centers, um, children that are pulled from, from the home in an emergency situation. So they, when this child gets this in the hospital, do they get to take it home then? Yes, Is that theirs? yes. It's, their very yeah, it's theirs to keep. It's okay. theirs to keep. Okay. It's hopefully to put a little smile on their face and yes, of course. make them think of, of nicer of things. Other things and yeah. bright colors and, and yeah, and yeah. warps and cuddly and all. Oh, this sounds, sounds excellent. Okay, so you put these all together. Where do you get all the stuff? So, so what's what is all? Well, from? we uh, everything is donated, um, and uh, we are um, in touch with a couple of designer. Um, so this appears to be kind of the designer a fabric designer from, fabric that's from right. home decky kind of things. That's right. So that one. Uh, there's some um, quilting um, shops around town, and then there is the of course McPhee workshop that has made <laughs> some kind donations to our well, group. Actually, this does fit into my. <laughs> yes, it's true. We have given you quite a lot of fabric, and the reason being is that. Um, people come into our shop and they say, oh, I can't buy more fabric because I've got enough fabric at home. And I, uh, nobody has ever enough no, fabric. No, I, I agree with that but, I, but there are people that have fabrics that they don't use anymore. Like they're just That's right, sitting there. Yeah, that, you bought it and you had this what idea. What did I, from, yeah. where did this come from? Yeah, and exactly. so I suggest that they bring it in and donate it to, to a to, our, it's to us, basically, but then we sell it for $2 a yard a meter, and then we use that for the wind house and all those kinds of things, but we also give it to groups like yours. That's right. So and you can come so into our shop and you did that, yep. and then just take that fabric and go and make good things out of it, and then it's a win-win situation, and then the women that got rid of all this fabric can come by buy some more fabric. So exactly. I mean, we, we love that. This, this works. It works beautifully. It's, it's the way the world works. So, yeah, exactly. So, yeah. So you then, um, does anybody have to know how to quilt to join your group? Do they uh, have to no, know? No. Uh, basic sewing, you know, I think a quilter's rule is if you can sew a, a, a straight line and a quarter inch seam, you're a quilter. Yes, exactly. So, <laughs> so, so something like just plain squares like that is That's just right. fine? And you can get into something more intricate. Yes, or these ones, you said that you got quite small pieces from That's this That's right, they were place. strips. Um, and um, this was a uh, quilt was actually done by our, our group coordinator in St. Albert, um, Myra, and uh, she's put it together in this beautiful cobweb I pattern. think that would be the great challenge is that you get, I mean, quilters... The regular quilters go out and buy all these specific things for, you know, wonderful, wonderful quilts, and they work it out on the computer, and they do all this kind of stuff. But now you're given a bunch of garbage, and you've got to make it into something that's beautiful. That's right, and, and make it, it and make it yeah. work. And I think so. You know, that's the challenge of this. Fabrics it's, in a paper bag. This and brings us back to the original quilts. What <laughs> grandmother used to do. She didn't use to color coordinate everything. Yeah. It was more of a functional thing, and that's really this could be functioning and comforting. That's right. So yeah. Oh, this is just. Fast. Is there any size restriction or anything like that? Uh, usually, to, uh, to the. T um, Crib size, okay. um, mm -hmm. something that's manageable for for a small child, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. something that's not going to be too taxing on our members okay. to be making. Well, so. good work. This you are just doing a great job, well, and I hope you. that we can get a bunch more members. And I would say, if you've got some ideas of people that are doing kinds of things like this, nominate them for our Good Works Award because I think we should recognize them. And it could be making quilts, it could be making teddy bears, it could be who knows what kind of things. It has to involve the sewing machine, and it has to be true. So get your nominations in. My email is linda at mcfeeworkshop.com. So you could email me and nominate them. And we'll feature some of those people, hopefully, on the show. And we've got a prize. We haven't quite figured out the prize. We're working on the prize, but it'll be a good prize. So um, I think we're out of time, Lori. Thank you so much. Well, it's thank you so much for having us and, it's and letting great. me talk about Quilts yeah. for Kids. Okay, super. Don't go away, because there's more coming. to be out in the real world and see what's happening out there and one of the most exciting things I can imagine and I'm seeing it as we speak is kids learning to sew because that's really what we've got to do everybody's got to get our children and our grandchildren sewing because it's just so much fun so helping in this whole industry is Una Hagen Una I'm delighted that you invited us Hello, Linda, and welcome to So Can You School of Sewing. That's very clever. I like that. And, and 
Tell me your thinking on, on that well, title. Well, it's a very positive name. If I can sew, so can you. Exactly. Do you have boys and girls? We and have boys on occasion, uh, not as many as girls. It's not a boy thing yet. Sure. But those who do come uh, excel. Of they're, course. They're often the top members of their group. Certainly. But the girls are learning so many valuable skills. Yes. Right from the beginning. Oh, yes. I mean, they keep coming back. You have. They go from what? When, when does it start? Well, they can start at any age, usually six or seven is a prime time to start uh -huh. and they can stay till they finish they they're never finished because as you know sewing is never unending. unending but we've had students often stay six seven and eight years one so, stayed for nine years oh my goodness so they can start in september and go till we go till the end of april that's the way our program is set up okay so it gives them 30 hours of intense instruction okay and, and each class is how long it's an hour long once a week. And okay. Uh, there are four, often three, but most of the time four students in a group. Okay. And, and you do are, this after school? We do it after school till after supper. Uh, okay. Homeschoolers can come earlier in the day, which is a nice option for Okay, them. okay. And you have a curriculum, or how do you decide what they do? We certainly do. We've got a wonderful curriculum that a group of sewing teachers called Sewing Schools of Northern Alberta uh -huh. uh, put together over a period of two years. We took all the skills that were important, and it parallels the Alberta curriculum, but it is definitely our own stamp on it. Sure, sure. Um, and I would think that some of these children will go on to take home ec in school if there's still any home ec left, which there is so sad. There isn't a lot. It's, it's being um, subtracted from the curriculum often. Yes. But uh, they certainly can, and often they uh, receive a gift of a sewing machine of their own, which is a wonderful thing. Yes, it is. And uh, yeah. then they can go on from there. Oh, I think this is fantastic. I just love to see all these kids doing this. This is just, and, and they're excited about it. They are how do you keep them? How do you, how do you keep them coming back? How do you do that? Well, we keep them coming back because they're set up for success. If they have small successes each week, and not every week this happens, but when they have small successes, it leads to bigger As in success. something they can take home or something they, they can use or something? something that they've just learned. If, if you learn how to thread the machine and actually find that it works, mm -hmm. then you're motivated to come back and try it again. Hallelujah. Yeah, let me do more. I, I would imagine you almost create monsters. Like if you can sew that straight line, hey, can I make uh, my dad a suit? Oh, or, <laughs> yes. And, and we have to temper the skill level with sure. the creativity and sure. aspirations for the sure. students. For sure. sure, sure. Oh, that sounds great. Well, guys, do you want to show us what you're making? I know you're just you're not making something here, but let's see what you've made because you've had a busy year. Okay, Brittany, what have you got? Well, just a minute. That's a beautiful bag. Did you make the bag? Yeah. Oh, brilliant. That is great. I have a foot pillow. Oh, isn't that good? Let's put that down and have a look at that. Great idea. So did what other kinds of things did you do this year? I've done pajama pants. Um, yeah. beanbag buddy and a snowman. Good, and the skirt you've got on. Yeah. In fact, all of these kids have got skirts that they've made, so I think that's fantastic. That's just great. And Alyssa, what have you got? This bag that I made. Um, yeah. That, that has can... the, um, the Canada flag colors. Yes. And I made this pocket for the Alberta Centennial this year. Oh, isn't that nice? And the embroidery, did you get involved in helping with the embroidery too? Sort of. Yeah, that's good, because that's a fancy machine. And then you put that zipper in. That's pretty smart. And how old are you? Eight. Eight. Wonderful. There's just all kinds of future ahead for that. And the skill level is amazing to me. After all these years, it still surprises me. Yes, yes, yes. Kelsey, what did you do? Well, I did this mouse house. Mouse house. I don't really care about mice, so I'm not really wanting to make a house for them. But what kind of a mouse is you going to put in here? It goes on your computer mouse. Oh, of course, it'll keep your mouse, your computer. Oh, good. That's a great idea. You could make lots of those. Yeah. Yeah. And what's this? My pajamas that I made. Oh, nice. Beautiful. Well done. It's one of the standard projects we do is make. Okay. And Sydney, what did you make? I made this quilt. Oh, and this folds into a quilt as well. Yeah. Like that comes out. And it's also a pillow. Good, good. And this, did you make this as well? Yeah. And that's a nice hooded hoodie. Yeah. Good girl. You So you guys are going to come back again next year? Yeah. Yes, and keep going and keep sewing. Yeah. Super. And Yuna, I think you've done a great job. How many students have you put through? I bet there is well over 200 who've started. Okay. Over and the years. Yes, yes. 
And as we said, sewing is forever, so this will go on and on and on. Thank you. We need more Yunus. And I hope you're inspired. Teach a kid to sew. It's great. See you next time on Linda McBee's Workshop. To receive the companion book for this series, send 1998 to the address on your screen or call 1-888-McBee.